Hey, welcome to another radio related video and this is another in the series of my QSL collection that I'm slowly digitizing on my YouTube channel. And uh, this is from Radio Nacional do Brasil, which was in the 80s, a very, very easy to hear Brazilian national station. Uh, and I actually enjoyed uh, Radio Nacional do Brasil a lot. They had a, a nice mixture of uh, music and uh, programming. Um, this is one of the stations I uh, have great memories back in the 80s. And so they uh, were broadcasting at night at 0200 UT. Here's a card from Radio Nacional do Brasil. This is for a report of uh, 5 January 1988 probably. On 11745, which I remember being that frequency for Radio Nacional de Brazil, hope to hear from you in the near future. Best wishes, Correspondence Service, Nara Pereira, and with a uh, handwritten signature. Um, I always rem remember every time I watch these little cards and I see handwritten uh, signatures and uh, you know the names of people that actually answered my letters. And I always wonder what age they were back then, and are, are they still alive? What, what type of life are they living today? What are they doing? Uh, that's always uh, something that I wonder from time to time when I watch these cards. Second card from Radio Nacional do Brasil with a very nice beach front uh, type uh, card here. And this is another report for 11745. On 5 August 1985 at 0200-11745. Best regards and 73s. And we have here this signature. Let's compare the signature. Does it look like the same signature as the other one here? I wonder. No, it looks different. So it's not the same person that actually signed here. So this is the Radio Nacional do Brasil. They left the shortwave bands uh, somewhere in the uh, late 80s or early 90s. It's, it's been a while. I don't remember the exact date, but I believe they kind of ended somewhere late 80s or early 90s. And if I remember well, the story behind them leaving shortwave is that their transmitters um, had some technical problems and they just didn't have the money or didn't put the money necessary to fix them. So they uh, kind of, uh, it was not planned that they would get off, I believe. It just was technical difficulties uh, shut down the transmitters and they never came back on shortwave. So there's no farewell or anything here. Uh, another station that I enjoyed a lot back in the uh, 80s but that was very apartheid moment like programming. Radio RSA from South Africa, Voice of South Africa that had programs towards North America. Uh, for those who don't know what Radio RSA is, it's what today is called Channel Africa. Um, at a certain point after the apartheid ended and everything changed, they uh, decided to um, I believe in the 90s, they decided to have a, a, a change in their programs. And it became Channel Africa, and they focused their programming towards Africa only. So they kind of became the BBC uh, of Africa, if you want, uh, from South Africa. And they uh, stopped transmitting to other regions of the world. They really focused only on uh, Africa. Um, if you have a low noise environment, you can hear Channel Africa. There's a daytime frequency of 15235 that uh, does propagate. It's not very strong here, and that's actually in the noise here. Um, I did have a reception last night on 6155 kilohertz at 0340 or something like that. I passed across a frequency and noticed that there was an English station, and uh, while checking, it was Channel Africa. So it means 6155 if you don't have too much noise. That could be a good evening frequency for North America if you're trying to get Channel Africa. So Radio RSA for a report. 
um, that is dated 24 February 1984, 0200, 5980 kilohertz. That was one of the two frequencies they would use, I believe, 5980 and 9615 or something like that. Um, so, um, yes, I know I, I really talk a lot while I make these QSL. Um, so, for a lot of you, probably I talk too much, but hey, I enjoy talking and then I enjoy uh, giving the descriptions of all these little cards and the, the memories that I have of them. And finally, Radio Korea, which is KBS World Radio. It's the same thing. Um, back then, they were really Radio Korea International. And um, not, not to mix with you know, Radio Korea, which is the voice of Korea, that is uh, Pyongyang, which is North Korea. This is really South Korea, uh, Radio Korea, which is now KBS World Radio, for a car that kind of started something here. For some reason, they stopped, uh, and it says 1983. So this is a QSL from 1983 of Radio Korea. They also had really nice cards. Uh, one of the main frequencies I would listen to, and I always remember, and actually last summer, uh, I had good memories because uh, they actually started again the 15575 kilohertz to North America. And in the summer, it actually can propagate quite well to North America. Uh, they're still using it this winter. I've tried it a few times. I think they're at 1300 UT, 15575. But there's no sign of Radio Korea on that frequency at this time in the winter time. So maybe the West Coast does have reception though. So KBS World Radio or Radio Korea back in the 80s. I hope you enjoyed the videos. 73.